Our next guest is no stranger to talking about the issues that matter and learning to laugh at them. In the new documentary, In Amanda We Trust, comedian Amanda Seals heads to our nation's capital to speak to Americans and policymakers about the politics that shape our government. This is Amanda contemplates her own run for office. Take a look. I wanted to get some insight from some folks who are already on the inside. And uh, well, your Afro is needed here. <laughs> <laughs> no one is going to believe me in this. You know what? You never told me. What are you running for? The question really is, what are we running to? I'm running to the people. <laughs> Joining us now is none other than Amanda Seals. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Okay, so you decided to document your trip to D.C. as you contemplate a run. <laughs> what made you, I mean, there's so many questions here. First, why'd you decide you might throw your name in the ring? So it really is the fact that people are always telling me online, like, you should run for president, mm. you should run for president, Amanda for president. And so when I was contemplating how I wanted to form these little segments, I was like, you know what? What if we wrap it around that concept? And like, if I were going to run for president, what are the steps mm -hmm. that I would take? If I was going to run for any office, what are the steps I would take? And the reality is we live in a country where first, you got to get your look. You got to get your legislative look, you know, and that's just the optics. Then it was like, well, let's go talk to some people who already do this job to get some insight into what that entails, which was Representative Jamal Momin and Representative Ilhan Omar. And then it was like, OK, well, let's just talk to the people about, like, what do they even see government as? Mm -hmm. I believe to uh, to all degrees that our liberation is education. And if we keep getting further away from government, we notice that it keeps getting more involved in our lives. And we allow that. Now, how did this morph into this when it was initially going to start out as a stand-up stand special? So it started out as a stand-up special, but as production always goes, surprises happen. And so originally I was like, okay, I'm going to do a stand-up special. Um, it's going to be just as good as my HBO stand-up special. But then I remembered I'm not wealthy. <laughs> So, like, the content will be good, but, like, how are you going to shoot it and get it out there in that same way? We went to D.C., and, I mean, it gave us everything. I mean, we really got to use every ounce of this footage in this project because it feels like it was an anointed project. So many comedians are really, I, I'm going to call it, like, empty calories, their jokes, right? They're, they're afraid to really touch on, in particular, politics, especially right now in this cancel culture. Hmm. But you really dive in head first. I mean, this is tackling politics as much as you can. What is it that keeps you running toward the, these hot button issues? I really, well, first of all, I really love black people. And we are in a racist nation. And there's a lot of effort being made to gaslight the whole country, not just black people, into believing that that is not the case. And in order to really challenge that, in order to challenge the systems that are supported by that, we need to understand these systems. We have to get away from ignorance. And I have a gift with my comedy in being able to simplify what has been made to feel like really complex concepts. And so in doing that, I have purpose. If you were to run for president, what would be your platform? What would be some of the, the social issues, the, the civic issues that you would really be uh, putting at the forefront? <clears throat> First of all, there's far too much power given to policing. Uh, the reality is that we oftentimes are arguing the past, but we're not applying it to the present. And we know that policing has just ravaged uh, underprivileged and black and brown communities in this country in ways that are in front of our faces um, and that need to be addressed. That's one. Two, housing. There just simply needs to be equal opportunity to housing. Um, I think, you know, we need to understand foreign policy. You know, we need to look at the way America is existing on a global scale. I think for a lot of us, like, we understand America as Americans and we're kept with blinders on. There really isn't a global perspective that I feel like America takes its place as. Because this is, it, it's serious, but it's... You, no, you, it is. But, but, but it's there, using different comedy. methods. Right. And, and so what do you hope that, that people will take away uh, oh. from this special? Curiosity, first and foremost. We have an epidemic of apathy in this country because so many people feel like they are completely disavowed of power in how they can create change in the systems that are oppressing us and the systems that are, you know, uh, upholding efforts that give power to people that don't care about the people. If my vote didn't matter, why would they work so hard to suppress it? 
We need to demand public servants, not politicians. And in order to do that, we need to understand the government and the politics and how it works. Mic drop, Amanda Seals, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> in Amanda We Trust is now available to watch on inamandawetrust.com. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.